Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are working on Aesop's Fables and we are on page three, I think. Let me double check. Yes, page three. So page three is going to be the rabbit and the hare and I'm not sure if I'm saying that right or if it's the hare and the rabbit. Either way, you guys know what I'm talking about. So I am going to use both the 12 by 12 and the eight by eight. I'm gonna show you what I'm going to do. Um, we are going to use the eight by eight as the base on the page and then I'm going to cut out these large features and this is actually going to wind up being a, a pop-up and so is this. So these two things are going to be part of the mechanism that pops up. Part of the reason I'm going back and forth between the 8x8 and the 12x12 is the text in the 8x8 is so small and I think that this is more appropriate for, for the album if you're going to use it as a storybook or a, um, a photo album. Okay, so what I have done so far is I have fussy cut uh, the rabbit piece out right here, and I have fussy cut the um, the text out. So that's what I've done so far. I'm ready to set this aside and um, go ahead. And like I said, this is going to be the base. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to the 8x8. Everything else is going to get added on top of this. So... And I wanted to use this as the base in the background because of the colors, because when I did this and tried to do some of this, I, I didn't like the contrast in this case. <clears throat> I think it kind of creates a wrinkle in the flow. So this is all going on top of an eight by eight pocket page, okay. which means you need to take a, a little bit off your eight by eight to get a border. <clears throat> And the pop-up on this one is going to be pretty simple, and I don't want it to be too complicated because I don't want it to interfere when I close the book with page two, which also has a pop-up mechanism and a dimensional element on the page. So you can't do too much, or I think when you when you go to open or close, you got to worry about them rubbing against each other. Okay, so there's our base. Now I mocked this up once and so I want to show you where we're headed. So this is going to go right here and I'm going to make it so that it's an easel. So it, it'll stand up like this when um, when you pull this up. And then what I'm doing with the rabbit that's been fussy cut is it's actually going to get attached here so that when you pull the easel up you get this dimension and then on the bottom um, I'm going to fussy cut the larger um, turtle element out and it is going to layer on top of here. So that's that's where I'm headed right now. So I just wanted to give you guys an idea. Now when I first mocked this up, I, I made this uh, fit this, but what I really want is to have more cardstock here so that this will be part of, um, part of the element when I hold it up. So I'm gonna give you the dimensions for this after I, um, after I cut it out and I'll be right back. <clears throat> I have um, figured out what our little pop-up mechanism is and I have rough cut this on purpose because I want to actually trim around this. So what you're gonna do is you're going to get eight and a half by seven inches, eight and a half by seven inches. You're gonna score at one and three quarters and three and a half. Okay, and that's gonna fold in half. This first piece right here, the first uh, one and three quarter inches is where we're going to adhere this piece. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this flat and we are going to glue from this score line down so that when we move it up, it'll go like this. We don't want to put any glue on this side. Okay, so what I'm gonna do real quick is put some pencil marks here to help me. And I'm also looking at my words across to make sure it's kind of straight, or as straight as it can be. And you can see there's a little bit of border on the top and bottom, and that's what I want. Actually, let me think about it. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking. So I wanna come up 
and trim all this. And I'm going to remove this in a minute and show you what I'm doing. And then down here, oops, just drawing it. And I want to cut it a little on the outside of the pencil line so that I have a nice little border around it. So now you can see there's the cutout, and then I want to leave that hinge in place, but I want to cut off all the excess black paper here and leave a little bit so you've got a little bit of a border. And I'm not ready to glue it down yet, and you'll see why in a moment. Okay, that is looking pretty good. So now I want to make sure that this is um, pressed together, and I'm going to trim around those edges. And I am trimming on the outside of the line. So I have a little bit of a border, so I'm going to come back with an eraser and hit those edges. I mean, uh, pencil marks. Oops, that was a little tight. <clears throat> and I'm going to leave even more than I uh, marked with my pencil. We can always come back and trim more of that if we need to. <clears throat> a lot of fussy cutting in this album. I wouldn't call this really fussy cutting, but a lot of hand trimming, I guess. And I want to show you something. I'm not sure. In a moment. There we go. Okay. So that's that. When this is adhered, it's going to go up like this. Now we're ready to set this aside. <clears throat> and the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add this to the top. <clears throat> and it's going to look like this so that when we pop it up, both pieces are going to come forward. Now I've got two options. I've got this option where I've trimmed very, very little away. And then because I did a lot of mocking up, I, I've got actually two sets of paper. And then I've got this one, which um, is much more fussy cut, which I like. I think I like this one better. Um, because when you pull it up, it just looks more interesting than this. So I think I'm going to do something in between. So here I cut right along this line. I'm going to, when I when it lays down flat, I want basically the rabbit behind it to be covered up. So that means that's this section right here. So what I'm going to try to do is cut along this horizon and see how that looks. And then we'll come back. We can always cut more off if we want. So I'm going to go slow. And I'm not going to talk right now because I am going to basically put this all on fast forward from here forward. That actually, yeah. Okay, we're going to test it. So, let's see, where is that? Rabbit's head is right in here. So I'm going to cut a little more away.
Okay. And I'm going to cut off this green right here. I think I like that. I think that's going to look good. Okay. I'm going to soften this a little. Okay. So that's, um, and I'll do a little bit more here. What we're going to do. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah. So the rabbit's head would have been appeared right here. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And it needs to come down a little bit, yeah, to make sure that it's protected when the book's closed. So that is set. Okay, so the next thing, and as much as I like this, I think it, it just looks really funny with the the other rabbit's head sticking out there, um, which is quite a bit. It's almost all the way up to here. So I, th I think you either have to cut on this line or up here. There's no, no in between because of the uh, turtle right there. So there we go. That is the current plan. Now I'm going to ink this. I'll be back in a second. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to join these two. And then once this is joined, we're going to put the whole thing on cardstock and cut around it again. Okay, one more thing before we um, glue these two pieces together is we're going to um, make a template of this. And um, the reason we're making a template is when this is in the open position, we'll have um, uh, what we need is um, some designer cardstock here. So I'm just going to draw a pattern, and then when we decide what our how we want to line the inside of that um, fold, we'll just use this template um, as our guide. I don't need to cut this out right now, but once we figure out what pattern paper we want, we'll cut this out, lay it on, trace it, and then we'll have uh, the designer paper for here. There's no need to line this because when it's in the open position, you won't see it. So you're going to see this and part of this. That's all you're going to see. Okay, so now we are ready to join these two pieces and then put some black cardstock on the back. And I keep pulling this in as a reference because I want to make sure that um, however I center it, it still works um, within the framework of the base page. So, Oh, and also I went ahead and trimmed off the gold on this edge since there's no gold on this edge and the only gold there is is really right there. And you could uh, fussy cut further if you want, but I'm going to leave it like that because I think it goes with the gold rim around this. So once I get eyeball this and get it where I want it, um, I'm going to put a trace line on this so I know where to glue it. Then I'm going to lay the whole thing down on some black cardstock and cut around it. Okay. Like it. This looks crooked. I'm actually going to use some temporary tape to get this to sit still for me on the mat, on the base page. I don't know where that came from, but I'll fix it. There we go. So I think I need to square everything up visually. So once I have that taped down, I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to put it under uh, the text and see if it's lined up with the grid. 
and you can see it's slightly off. So I'm going to tweak it until I get it right where I want it. <clears throat> there we go. That's straight now. So now that I know this is straight to the base page, I can figure out where I want this. And we'll do that same process again when we actually glue uh, the pop-up card down. Okay, so now I'm just going to put some pencil lines here so I know where to apply the glue. It needs to be a little higher because I'm trying not to cover my words, but also to have enough overlap that uh, it feels secure. Let's be over a little bit. Okay, so that's where I'm going to apply my glue, and then I'm going to glue this back down. So you can take that off now. And this is just a repositional temporary tape. What do they call that? Removable tape, and it's just scotch brand. I use it a lot of times when I'm mocking things up, so I don't have to waste tape and glue. And also that I can reposition until I get it figured out. Okay. So you may ask, why didn't I just cut the rabbit and this out? And you can see why, because I really needed to squish them together. So the rabbit came from here, and the words came from here. So it took a lot of compression to really get what I wanted, even if I... Here's how it was. So you can see there's you know quite a bit of compression to make this work on the 8 by 8 format. Okay, so now we're ready to put this on some black cardstock. And then we're gonna be off to the races with a lot of fussy cutting after that. And this um, I'm doing just to make it more rigid. It's not required to make the pop-up work. But I'm worried that because of the size of this, it might want to flop otherwise. I just realized I have my little desk fan on. Hopefully that wasn't too irritating. I noticed it because it's drying my glue out. Make sure you get all your little tabs. Those are the things that are the most likely to get hung up on something. So you want to make sure they're well reinforced. Okay. Now this is uh, personal design preference. You can uh, leave a black border around it or you can trim right up to the designer paper. Is pure preference. Since I have trimmed right up to the designer paper uh, up until now on other pages, I'm going to continue that. But this is really a personal preference. So I'm going to let that dry for a second and then um, I'm going to start fussy cutting. Yeah, there's, there's an example of where I didn't get any glue. Luckily it didn't tear. So go around, poke at your edges, make sure they're all all down before you start trimming. Okay, I'll be right back.
done. Okay, now we're going to pull this back in and this back in. And this is going, the back side of this is going to get glued down here. And then we are going to glue this to this. So I think what I, what I want to do is glue this down first. Yeah. And then trim off any excess here. And, and then I can, as a unit, decide how to put that in straight. So the next thing we're going to do is on the, the fold, the first one and uh, three quarter inch um, score line, we're going to add glue there. Okay. And now we're going to add this on top so it's nice and rigid and then we're going to add it to this. And then again, this is going to come up like an easel. Then we have this dimensional picture to look at. Just wiping off my excess glue. Now what I want to do is look around the edges, see if there's anything else I want to trim off. And it looks like we did a pretty good job. So now we're ready to place this right here. So I'm going to glue or tape down my uh, eight by eight page and use my grid to help me get this in straight. It's not going to be perfect, and the reason is this is not perfect. So, I mean, it's when you look at it, you can tell it's not a perfect oval. So there's going to be some variation in how this goes, but what I want, what I'm striving for, is that the text be straight. Okay, so now that's in place. So the next thing we want to do is make sure that we've come down far enough that this flower is not exposed outside the book when it's closed. And I really want this to be roughly here. So well, we're gonna have to move it over a little bit, right about there. So I'm gonna tape this down, if I can get my tape up, yeah. And then I'm gonna use my ruler and then try to pivot it in place. Okay, here's my ruler. Ideally, we want to pick a line 
that's on both sides, text that on both halves. So that would go straight on the text. And it's quite crooked to the grid. So slide over. Does that look right? We're off the top. There we go. Lost my tape. Oh, good grief. Okay, we're going to take this down. Okay, so now we have pretty much where it's going to be installed. I'm going to move this tape. So what I want to do is draw my reference line. Around the black piece here. Okay, so we know where to install it now. So there's my reference line. Once I get my glue on, I know I'm going to put it right there. So the rest of that exercise was really about location. Okay, here we go. Just want to make sure I was still rolling. Okay, now what we're going to do is it's going to, this is a flip side, there's front. It's going to function like this. So the, this needs to be free, no glue here, glue only down here. Okay, now we're going to close. that down and look for our reference line. Okay, and we should be good to go. So that is a big part of this page, like so. So the next thing, I'm going to bend that so it's train it back a little bit. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is place a magnet here and a magnet on the back of this so that that is the closed position and it stays closed. Okay, so actually, is that what I want to do? Maybe I want to put it more in the middle. So I'm going to place a magnet inside and then also one as close to the score line as possible. So it, the magnet's going to be about midway up, um, and I think that'll help everything stay flatter. Um, we could have put a magnet behind here and here, but then, I don't know, I didn't plan that, so we're not going to do it that way. <laughs> okay. My, uh, I'm going to place um, the first one back here on the top piece, and then I'll locate the second one after we get this in. Now it, I'm going to put this magnet as close to this score line on this side as I can without interfering the, the, uh, with the mechanism. So there we go. Yep, and it still lays flat. And I'm just going to put a piece of black cardstock over this, I think. Um, there's no reason to put any designer paper here. It's not going to be exposed. So I'll just put a little piece of black cardstock, so the hand cut. Yep. That's big enough. I'm going to keep it from closing because this the tape is sticky. And I don't want it to stick yet. Okay. 
just enough to cover that. Up. Okay. And again, I'm going to train this a little bit. I want it to curl more back. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some designer paper down here. I don't know what that is yet, um, but I'm thinking, it, I, I don't know what it is yet. This is one of the options that I have, and part of the other thing, once we get the designer paper put in here, the other thing that we are going to do is we're going to layer in the turtle, fussy cut from here, the tree, and a couple of other things. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to take a break and finish planning that part out, and then when we get together, I'll show you what I've decided, and we'll cover the inside, and then that'll be, be it for page three. I'll be back soon. Hey, guys. I found the paper that I'm going to use as the base inside here, and so this is it's time now to cut out our template and make a, a pattern, create the pattern, draw this, lay it down as the base, and then we're going to add some more layers. So let's do that real quick. What I do with my scissors? I don't know, so I'll use a different pair. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna cut this. I felt like there was some glue on it. Trim this out real quick. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is lay it down inside here because it's not a perfect oval. There's probably a right side and a wrong side. And when I trace my pattern paper, I'd like to, to get that straight. Be aware of that. There wasn't anything that was sky, um, so this is the closest thing to it. And it'll make a little more sense when I start to show you how we're going to add some of the fussy cut elements. So let's lay it in and see which way it fits best. And that looks perfect. So that means we're going to want to lay it this way and then trace around it, cut it out, and then we're going to lay it on here. So that's our next few steps. And again, this is kind of an organic uh, shape. So you have to be willing to kind of go with the flow there. It's not going to be perfect. Um, and if you're like me and used to right angles, <laughs> this is a difficult thing. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and cut this out. And it's better to be cautious. You can always cut more off. Try not to over trim. Sorry, I, I think I was uh, out of frame again. Like I said before, fuzzy cutting requires, for me, I have to get a little closer to it to see my line. Okay. Now I'm going to add some ink to this. Not with the lid. <laughs> okay, so that is going to go in like so. And what you're actually going to see gets yeah, definitely this way. What you're actually going to see when it's open is this. You're not going to see anything else. You're not going to see this black up here. So let's see how I did. If I want to trim anything else off. That came down a little further than I, than I wanted it to, but I think I'm pretty happy with it. I might actually try to cut a little of that off with my X-Acto knife if I can do it without um, damaging anything. Okay. I 
And some of that's going to get covered up when, when we add our layers. I think there's actually going to be a tree here. Okay, like so. Okay, so we can set this aside. And by the way, that was from the 8x8 collection. I don't need this. So where's the piece that I trimmed? Very tight. I must have moved it. Well, good grief. Hold on, I misplaced something. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I have this in the trimmer. So what I want to do now is to layer some of this up here. And um, actually what I want is for the top of the turtle's back to be what stops this. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out what to do here. So I've already trimmed this off and I'm gonna set it aside because I do think I'm gonna fussy cut the finish out and figure out how to tuck it behind the head of the turtle. And then I do want to get this whole tree in. So I think what I'm going to do is fussy cut the rest of the way around the tree and then ship this over. So this is definitely a work in process, progress. How much do I have? I think that's going to work. And I cut off this. What did I? Oh, because there was the gold swirls on it. I didn't really want it. And that's why I cut that part off. Okay. I'm just going to cut this at an angle. Let's see if I'm right around eight. I am. Okay. I'm just going to cut this at an angle until we figure out how we're going to nest these things. So now that I've cut the tree out, it looks like we can at least scoot it over an inch, which is going to put us well within our range here. So let's see, what else do I want to do? I think I'm going to cut that out. Okay, now we're going to lay that in again. See how it's looking? Yeah, that's coming along. I like it. So, Okay, that's looking pretty good. I actually need to move that over a little. Okay, and if I do that, then I'm still a little bit crowded on this side. Hmm. So uh, what I'm what I'm thinking about right now is whether or not I want to cut this blue sky here, and then have the hump of the turtle sort of stand out more. So I'm hemming and hawing about that right now. This is gonna get glued pretty much straight onto, um, onto this piece, so I don't have to worry about little bits hanging off because um, it's gonna get glued flat down. So here's from my previous efforts, I was looking at doing this. So here's the tree I kind of cut out. I wanted to make sure that was in there. And then um, I was going to take the larger finish and tuck it right behind his head, that kind of stuff. So actually he needs to be shifted so it'd be covered more like that. Okay. So I have to be careful about how much I cut away here because I don't want him peeking out.
Okay, I need a few minutes and I'll be back. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're ready to finish um, Aesop's Table, page three. So I've um, fussy cut some of the um, elements from the bottom half of, of the 12 by 12 and I wanna show you what I've done. So I, I put them, taped them back together and part of the problem was this, the 12 by 12 is too wide to put down here. So one of the ways that I am managing that is by fussy cutting the turtle out. Move all my tape. I had put this together last night so I remember what to do. And so one of the ways that we're gonna narrow this down is by moving the turtle back. I think I gotta remember where I was last night. So when this is open, or do I need to do, oh, take that back. I taped it together because I fussy cut the turtle out and I don't think you need to, yeah. Don't, don't cut the turtle out. So I was putting it back together for a reason. And I'm just gonna leave this temporary tape on here until I glue it up here and then I'll remove the tape. So I fussy cut the turtle and it was really wasn't required. So what I did do though is on the 12 by 12 sheet is I cut off right here is where um, the finish line uh, sign was. So I cut straight down from there and I think it was just under an inch. And then what I did was I fussy cut my tree out here because I wanna move it in. So I get the tree and the turtle and the rabbit. So really all you're gonna to need to do is fussy cut around the tree. And as you can see, this is now eight inches or just under eight inches across. So it fits on the page. And if I had not fussy cut my tree out, you could see it would be hanging off the page. So I fussy cut the tree out and I'm gonna move it over. And where was I going to put it? <clears throat> I'm gonna put it right here because I want it to marry up with the, the path here so it looks like it's coming around the tree and then back up the hill. So normally the tree would have been much lower down here and here's your path, but I'm gonna create an illusion that the path is up here. So it's gonna go in. at a slight angle, and part of the reason I want this slight angle is so the tree looks like it's actually anchored here right behind the rabbit. Okay, so now that's done. So again, all you really need to do is fussy cut the tree, and then I would, you know, keep in as much of this foliage as possible, and then trim as you go to make it fit just right. Now, when I close this, as is, it's covering too much of the turtle for me. So now that I know what the width is gonna be, I'm going to mess around a little bit until I get the height where I want it. And this looks about right. So I have trimmed nothing off the bottom so far from the uh, 12 by 12. I've only cut the width. So again, I cut off about an inch which you can use the, um, the sign as your measuring point down, fussy cut the tree out and then pulled it in so that I can get the 12 by 12 image on this eight by eight pocket page. Okay, now I'm going to trim a little, test a little, trim a little, test a little. So it looks like right here where this gold swirl starts is where I want to trim because I want most of the turtle to be exposed. <clears throat> And that is seven eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna go trim it and we'll be right back and we're gonna test it. <clears throat> okay. So there we go. So we still have the finish line in here. We got a little bit of the gold, which I don't care for, but it's okay. And then we can worry about how we're gonna fussy cut the top of this after we get the height. So now if it goes in just like so, and we close it, we still have plenty of the turtle showing and the rabbit, so I'm liking that. Okay, so the, the next thing I need to do is trim off this uh, little piece that's wider than um, 
the eight or uh, seven and seven eight inch mat and I think I'm just going to hand trim it so I'm going to lay it in and I'm actually going to use some temporary tape to hold it in place and then get my um, exacto up and then just hand trim this okay Trim it right there. Now let's test it again. <clears throat> and that's looking pretty good. This is going to close. I'm liking it. So over here, I cut out the finish line sign and I, I want it to go slightly it's right here and I want it to go behind the turtle um, so the only way to do that is to cut part of this off here on the top so I get I did cut a slit but it's not gonna um, maybe cut a slit along along the um, horizon line but I'm not really liking that. So my problem is I don't like this gold. So I think I am going to cut around the turtle, around the tree, and around this tree. So there's a little bit of blue sticking out. I'm gonna trim that off. And it's okay, because we're gonna lay it down on blue. So I think it's gonna be fine. I've got lots of temporary tape everywhere. Okay. Oh, that's another piece. I do want to keep the turtle intact down here where it's in the land, but I'm going to cut around the sky. And that'll clear in just a minute. I'm just going to rough cut right now. So you guys can see where I'm headed. Oops, too much coffee, I'm jittery. Okay. So yeah, and it does it looks just as good as if we didn't have it. So now I'm gonna come in and cut more detail around the trees um, and firm that up. This is gonna get glued down right here. Um, and we're gonna, before we get it completely glued down, we're gonna tuck the finish line sign right here and it's going to come up over the blue just like the tree is going to. Okay, it's looking good. So let's do a little more detail trimming. And you'll be glad to know that we're going to lay it straight down. We're not going to cardstock back it. So you don't have to fussy cut twice. But once I'm done, I am going to ink it. So once again, we're cutting out uh, along the landscape line, the turtle hump, and then back again to the landscape line. So this part where I cut the turtle out, don't do that. You don't need to. I was just going over my options about how to basically pull the images together. One way I was trying to do it was just to move the turtle and not move the tree, but I couldn't make it happen. So I went, changed my mind and decided we fussy cut the tree out. That was the easiest thing to shift without changing the overall look of the image too much. Okay. Coming on the end, cut that off. It's not needed. Okay, there we are. So it's looking, looking pretty good. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take my tree off, I'm gonna ink all my edges, <clears throat> then I'll add my tree uh, on top after I've glued this piece down. I don't even think this is gonna show, so I'm not being very careful. Okay, and then quickly, 
as I glue this down, I want to make sure that I get my finish line tucked in there before it's dry. Okay, I'm going to take, I'm going to leave these two pieces attached with my tape. I think it'll make it easier to lay it down. Of course, yours shouldn't be cut here. From here to here should all be one piece, right? I'm going to add my ink and then we're going to lay it down. And uh, that is pretty much going to be the end, page three. So a lot of fussy cutting, I know. That's kind of what makes this fun. So the flips and flaps are really not that complicated, but a lot of fussy cutting and a couple of new pop-up element ideas, or not new, but certainly I haven't used them in albums. More like, uh, this is something I've done with cards. You definitely want to add ink around these trees because it's going to be blue on blue otherwise. Um, and they will kind of blend right in. And I'm struggling with it because mine's got a tape line halfway through. <laughs> It wants to collapse on me. Need a little more right in under the tree. It's going to get glued flat, so I'm not really worried about lifting it too much. Okay, let's see where does my tree come in? It's going to come in right about here. So I am going to fix the top of these trees to be a little bit more detailed, a little less blue on the outside. There we go. Got a little more ink, and then we're ready to go. Oops. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> like the tree is the highest point it is so I'm gonna do a little trick here and I'm gonna put a little bit of paper behind it so it's double thickness because I want my tree to stand up a little bit because it's gonna be basically the kickstand that holds up um, the uh, text okay I'm gonna put one more layer Trying to hide it so it's not showing, but I'm not sure I'm doing a good job. So I don't want it as thick as uh, chipboard. More like just a couple layers of cardstock. Okay. I should have thought of that sooner before I put all my glue on, but we're okay. This is going to go down here. And it's going to lay right on top. The pattern just below it. And now I can take off all my temporary tape and burnish this. And again, you shouldn't have to do this because hopefully you didn't cut around the turtle. Okay. Nope, oh, gotta get our finish in there. Shoot, it's not inked. I need to lift that real quick before. So I got a place to put it. Okay, I'm gonna always shorten the stick, which is what I'll do. A little bit more. Ink it and put it down. OK, 
Okay, we're going to tuck it right behind the turtle. And basically, we're trying to just lay it right on top of where um, the small one was. Okay, that makes it nice and interesting. Oh, I'm going to lift it a little so it's not touching his head so much. Okay, and then this is sticking up just a little bit, and that's going to be enough to stop this from collapsing on itself. So the, well, actually, it might be this tree that's going to be the tallest part. So let's ink the edge of the tree and then figure out how much or if any we want to cut off uh, the sides. don't really want to ink this because I want it to blend in. I don't want to magnify that. Just the tree. Okay. <clears throat> or not magnify, but accentuate. Okay, that looks about right. Right there. Okay. So the question is, yeah, I don't want to cut this out, I don't think. Or do I? I'm going back and forth. Maybe I do. Oh, it has to move in a little more. So the edge is not sticking out. Okay, you know what? I've decided I'm going to fussy cut the whole tree out. And I think it's going to look better. I'm going to leave this piece on the back side. Should be able to add it to the road, and then it, it we still have this continuous path that's going up and around it. I'm happy with that. Okay, it looks like I should cut a little bit more down here, so I'm going to cut a jagged line so that I can pick up a little bit more of that. Tape, tape everywhere. This is a little tough because it's getting kind of hard to handle. Okay, so I just waved it around a little bit so we don't have a straight line. It'll blend in a little bit better. Okay, now I don't have to worry about so much what I'm doing to the path um, as long as our tree goes on this ridge line. And it does, and it looks good. And this is going to be the highest point. But I think that's what I want is to, to stop on the second tree. So I'm going to glue this straight down after I ink the edges I just trimmed. And then I am going to lay it flat, show you what it looks like. And that's the end of page three. Just going to touch this edge just a little bit so we don't have any white sticking out um, after we glue it down. Okay, hey, this is a really interesting project. I've learned a lot. This, there's this channel called the pop-up channel and the guy just teaches you all kinds of interesting things. And it's really more about how the mechanisms work and not about the paper that you're working with. So it's been interesting. So I've had to take those lessons and then try to apply them to this paper, you know, to get some of these results. Anyways, I think it's been really interesting. I've enjoyed learning. A lot and hopefully you guys like it too and are you know excited to do something a little bit different than uh, some of my other uh, most of my other albums which are pretty straightforward flaps and pockets um, there we go okay I'm gonna do a little housekeeping then we're gonna take a look at this and I'm gonna pull in page two so you can see them side by side so again there's a magnet right in the middle that's kind of holding this down 
when you get to this page, and I, I may add one more element to this page, which is a butterfly, and that's the butterfly right there. I may cut that butterfly and have that kind of be the pull me tab, and then it this tree is what stops it. So from a sitting position, this is pretty much what you're gonna see. So it kind of tilts up so you can read it. Um, but it's not straight up and down like that. So you've got a little tilt up. You still see, you know, the pretty much the full image of the story. And that is page three. And then that is opened up and shares uh, the lion story, which is page two. And this has that um, pop up. Uh, I guess the best way to um, what I would call this is kind of like a shadow box. So we've got this dimensional lion here, even when it's closed. This is the pop-up here, and this is what it looks like closed. So I think side by side, they still look beautiful. And I always try to um, uh, design those in concert with each other. And then also I'm showing you that there's no conflict between the elements and the two pages. So when you open and close the books, nothing's getting snagged. Okay, there we go. I'll be back soon and we'll continue working on this album.